Hey there, I'm Joshua Bardwell, and I just want to take 30 seconds of your time before we get into the video in case someone has stumbled across this video randomly and doesn't realize what the context is. This is a playlist of videos teaching you how to build a FPV, first person view freestyle or racing drone from start to finish. If you've stumbled in in the middle, Go down to the video description, there's a playlist link, start at the beginning of the playlist and work your way through. If you are working your way through this video, I want to remind you that there is a Discord server, a Discord chat server uh, for Quad Camp Online. There's a channel over there where we provide support uh, for the people who are working through this project. If you have any questions, you can ask them down in the YouTube comments, absolutely, but if you need a little bit more real-time help, you maybe will get better luck over in the Discord server. Link in the video description. I also want to remind you, thanks to Rotor Riot for helping make this project a reality. And if you are thinking of working your way through this project, you can get all of the equipment for, to build the quadcopter in just one credit card swipe from the Rotor Riot store. Yeah, you can buy the stuff elsewhere as well. One piece here, one piece there. Pay too much for shipping. Accidentally buy the wrong thing. You get it all. And there's a link to that down in the video description. On with the video. Now we come to the part of the build where I install the receiver and this is the toughest part of the build for me because as much as I would like to build one quad for every single type of receiver that might be out there, <laughs> I can't. So I'm gonna show you wiring diagrams for each of the different types of receivers and they're gonna be in the printed PDF that you can, you can download, link down in the video description. But the one that I'm gonna show you is probably the most popular one for many beginners and it's going to be the FreeSky RXSR. With the RXSR there's one wire that we're not using. This is the SBUS input wire. This is used if you're doing redundant receivers which we're not. So we're going to just remove the white wire from the plug. There we go. Remove the white wire and then we're going to solder the remaining wires up and I'll show you exactly how to do that. For the receiver, we're gonna need about, oh, let's say this much wire. Well, not quite the entire thing, but we're gonna be coming to about here on the board and the receiver is gonna end up here. And if I leave myself a little bit of extra, I'd say about that much, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight centimeters, however many inches that is, if you're into inches. It's about how much I'm gonna leave myself. And I'm going to do the same strip and tin that I did previously. This time through, I'm going to pre-tin the pads and then do the wires for you. For the RXSR, I'm going to tin T4 for smart port telemetry. R6 for the receiver. That's going to be true for almost any um, any receiver that you're using, you're going to use R6. And then I'm going to tin 5 volts and ground. So we're going to go just in a little bit of a, a zigzag pattern here. Yellow wire to T6. Or T4 rather. Green wire to R6. Red wire to 5 volts. I cannot see what I'm doing. There we go. And black wire to ground. And then just like we did before, I'm going to lift this off of here, flip it over, and just uh, recheck these joints and maybe wet them a little. Oh, the camera's in the way. I'll just unplug that, flip the board over, and double check the joints. A 
we'll just twist this up. Plug in the receiver. You're going to want to mount this with your, your binding button for your receiver. Most receivers are going to have a binding button. You're going to want to mount that with the binding button facing up and accessible. So later when you go to bind, you don't have any problems. When you mount the receiver, I'm going to suggest you do it with the antennas facing the front of the quad. Uh, it's going to make it easier later to mount the antennas. That'll make more sense later. And kind of, I'm going to kind of push it up a little bit. I'm not going to push it to the back, but push it a little more toward the front. Again, to give the antennas just a little more room to be mounted. Antennas are going to come off this way later. Perfect. We're nearly done here. Uh, I'm now going to take these little standoffs that uh, were with the video transmitter a little while back. And I'm going to go ahead and install them on top of the flight controller. The soldering on the flight controller is done. Be careful not to pinch the wires as you're screwing them down. Be real careful not to pinch the wires. It's going to make a problem for you later if you do that. Potentially a fiery problem. screw those all the way down finger tight just finger tight no need to use a wrench or anything and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the video transmitter and I'm gonna have the video transmitter with the antenna on the right side of the quad the same as the USB port and I'm gonna install that and what let's do is let's just plug this in and then let's just give this plenty of twists to kind of keep it up and out of the way. Yeah, that's nice. That's not bad. Maybe one more twist. Don't have a lot of tension on it. Just enough twist to keep it neat. And then we'll go ahead and we'll install these screws, which we took out earlier. We finally finished reassembling this whole stack. Don't go crazy with this. It's really easy to strip these or, uh, or cross-thread them. I'm going to go ahead and screw on the video antenna. And the reason I'm doing that is because when we power up the flight controller, we do not want to ever power up the video transmitter without an antenna installed. The video transmitter can actually be damaged if it's powered up without an antenna installed. So always have that antenna on there anytime you're going to be working with the video, any, anytime you're going to be plugging the quad in at all, really. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a small length of electrical tape and after the antenna is installed I'm going to pass the electrical tape around it. Sometimes there can be video noise issues by having the SMA connector touching the frame and we'll just head those off right now. And this I think is going to be a good way to mount the video transmitter or the uh, video antenna. I'm just going to take some zip ties and put it on the side standoffs here. I'm going a little bit off book here because I'm not actually, I haven't actually done this yet, but it looks like a good idea. And it will allow the antenna to be removed without, uh, it will allow the top plate rather to be removed for maintenance without getting in the way of this antenna. You can see I've given this a little twist. You don't ever want that coax to be kinked or bent, just a little twist though, it's going to be fine. It's not bad. Well, I'm pretty happy with that actually. For the receiver antennas, what we're going to do is take a zip tie. I'm going to pass the zip tie around the arm. I'm going to go underneath the motor wires just so they're not getting tugged and pinched. I'm going to have the zip tie facing the front of the quad. 
pull that nice and snug so the zip tie sticks off the side of the arm just like so. And then I'm going to take a length of heat shrink and this also should have come with the accessory kit you got from Rotorite store or you sourced your own. I'm going to take the antenna and I'm just going to pass it up inside the heat shrink and then pass the heat shrink down over it. And I'm going to do this such that there's not too much tension on this wire here. But I'm just going to pass that in there. And I'm going to use my... You can use a lighter, you can use a heat gun. And that's how we're going to install the antenna. All right, guys, it's time for the final smoke check. All the soldering is done, all the electronics are wired up. We're gonna plug in a battery and we're gonna see if any magic smoke comes out. Before I do that, I'm gonna do one more continuity test. And also, if you have a smoke stopper, now is a very good time to use a smoke stopper. Seems all right. No smoke, no smoke, no smoke. You have to say that. So how are we doing? No smoke has come out, that's good. Let's see, we have got, uh, pointing with a metal instrument is a very, very bad idea. You can touch and short things. I'm a professional. We've got LEDs lit up on the video transmitter, good sign. We've got a blinking LED and a green LED on the, video, on the uh, flight controller, good sign. The motors went beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep, that is a good sign. And on the receiver, we have got an LED. Everything seems to be powered up and working. We haven't yet verified the camera. I guess the next thing to do would be to check the camera. Let's see, what channel is this guy on? It looks like it's on Fat Shark Band. That's the F LED here. Fat Shark Band 1F1. So let's get a ca uh, the goggles and see if we can see. And uh-huh well take my word for it i do see uh camera i see my camera working so everything is working this is wonderful if you've come this far congratulations you have essentially built a whole quadcopter in the next video we'll go through the final assembly just the last little odds and ends of putting it together you got to put the top plate on right and then we'll begin with the software side configuring betaflight and the escs and so forth